How you doing, Charles? Good. To... Well, you sound fantastic. See if we can start. Well, that would be terrific. And the fan base grows here on the top of the correct parking lot. Two teams that were a bit out of sync in midweek meet today to pick up some points in the West Coast Conference. It is the league leaders, the Santa Clara Broncos, against the San Francisco Dons. It is live, and it is next, right here on the WCC Network. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and wherever you are tuning into this broadcast from your car, maybe on your phone, your tablet, a pleasure, privilege, and very grateful to bring you this broadcast between these two rivals as the players kneel here in solidarity with the racial equality and the unrest that is going on in the country right now. It's important to take the knee today and every day standing against racism, standing against homophobia, standing against transphobia, and discrimination of every single sort of the day that we see in our current modern times. Charles Wolin and Joe Dugan with you here on the broadcast. And again, this is a Santa Clara team that lost in midweek. This is a USF team that lost in midweek as well. We'll go ahead and give you the starting 11 for Jerry Smith's Santa Clara Broncos. It sometimes looks like a 4-3-3. It sometimes looks like a 3-5-2, but Marley Nicholas continues in goal. Marissa Bubnis, Sophia Jones, and Emma Reeves in the back line. Karen Gore, who scored last week against Pacific, the last goal in their very impressive victory against the Central Valley team from Stockton. She scored and here she is on the ball. The midfield three is Ellie Glenn, Sally Menti, who had a beautiful assist. And there's Kelsey Turnbow right there with a shot, very low shot towards Molly Eby. Sally Menti again uh, had a wonderful assist for the second goal for Santa Clara last week. And Alex Loera will sit in the defensive midfield position. The front three is just wonderful and a very good front three for Jerry Smith's side. Izzy Dequilla, who scored in midweek against BYU. Kelsey Turnbow leads the side with six goals. And Julie Doyle as well on the right-hand side. For USF, there's only one change from the team that lost against St. Mary's. It is a traditional 4-3-3, but you would expect Jim Millender's side to press in his ninth season. Molly Eby is the goalkeeper. Samantha Kerwood-Wagner is the right back. The center back pairing is Cat Hill and Kenna Roth, who's been really impressive, the freshman. Isabella Esparza continues on the left side. The midfield three is Kaya Pigoni, Cassidy George, and Jamison Ward. The front three headed up by Kaylin Lunsford, Ashley Humphrey, and Marissa Vasquez as the ball sails into our open air press box here between these two teams. Santa Clara has dominated this series over time. This is Menti, her through ball looking for Daquila, handled by EB. San Francisco has only beaten Santa Clara one time ever. That was back in 2015. There's actually only been one tie ever, and that was in Jim Millinder's first season, a very famous 2-2 draw that USF came back to. But there have never been good results from San Francisco against Santa Clara including last year's matchup where Santa Clara thumped USF by a scoreline of six goals to one. Good afternoon, Joe Dugan. I hope you can hear me. I know you are socially distant from me outside of the stadium, but uh, good afternoon. Today should be a battle between these two teams, both looking for three points, crucial three points. Absolutely, Charles. Great to be with you. And uh, yes, great day here for soccer at Big West Go Field. USF's going to have to be extremely on their game in the three phases, or at least two of the three phases of the game, particularly defense and in transition. If they can hold Santa Clara and their dynamic striking power, they will have a chance to be in this game. And if they don't, it's going to be a long day for the Dons. Here is Sophia Jones, the senior for Santa Clara. She looks to switch the field, and Esparza is there for 
San Francisco. They look to clear their lines. Santa Clara dropped a non-conference game against a conference opponent in midweek. Izzy Dequilla scored the first goal, and then the BYU Cougars went on to win that game by a scoreline of two goals to one. Here is Karen Gore into the feet there of Izzy Dequilla, and again collected by Molly Eby. Broncos 5-0 in the conference. They still sit top of the division. The one loss against a conference opponent, but it did not count for conference points. So they're still on track to win the WCC title. Just a few more games left for Santa Clara. They do have a step on Pepperdine and on BYU as they both beat both of those sides earlier in the season. And for San Francisco, I talked to Jim Millender before this game, Joe, and he said that St. Mary's game, they did exactly what they wanted to do, St. Mary's. They would try to get USF on the restarts, and they did on those corners. Yes, that was a game for Jim Millender and his team where everything came together. They really executed to his game plan. He was very happy with that match. And then, unfortunately, the program took a, a pause. So building the momentum in this very difficult year already has been a challenge for the Dons. Yeah, and for the Dons, they are 2-3-2 two, and two overall, 1-3-1 one, and one in the conference. They've scored seven goals, and they've also allowed seven. But they've outshot plenty of opponents and had their opportunities. They've had chances, and well, uh, chances as well, and they've been competitive in every single game. But they are a mid-table team right now. They probably fancy themselves in that top four at some point, uh, maybe potentially in the fall or for years to come under Jim Millinder. Here Absolutely, is. And, and Jim won't make any excuses for his team, but they have been short players each and every game, particularly uh, with their some some of their strikers. Humphreys back today, which is great, but still missing a few players. First time these two teams met was back in 1985. So a series history that dates back quite well. And this is a rivalry that I think San Francisco would love to get some better results than they have. But under Jim Millinder's tutelage, they've actually gotten a couple. But Santa Clara really owns this series. 34 wins for Santa Clara. There's only been one win for San Francisco ever in the time that these two teams have met. And they're one tie. And you're right, and it's really bragging rights. It's not just bragging rights amongst the two schools, but it's bragging rights when coaches go to recruit the players from very similar player pools, whether it's Northern California, Southern California. You know, they're going to use that to their advantage if they're able to claim that bragging right of beating their opponent. And you've played in a Santa Clara-San Francisco rivalry quite a few times on the, uh, the men's side back in the early 90s. Here's Menti, her through ball, cleared away by Roth and brought down by Jamison. And to your point there, Joe, you know, not just bragging rights in terms of the recruiting, but bragging rights in terms of the regional rivalry. And it's, it's neat to actually have a regional rival within the 50 miles. Of course, you always want to win your games and try to get the best results. And that's what you love about the WCC. I feel like there's a lot of rivalries within the WC, friendly rivalries, which is great competition, whether it's St. Mary's, Santa Clara, and then you know, uh, Pacific these days. It's great. There's a lot of local rivalries. I consider them local. You know, it's a bus ride away. Yeah. But obviously, some go back further than others. Kaya Pagoni stands behind this free kick. There's three in the wall for Santa Clara, including Turnbow, Karen Gore, and Julie Doyle. Pagoni's ball to the back post, looking for Jamison Ward. Can she keep possession and does? Esparza on the left. San Francisco will look to recycle. Roth over the top, but dealt with by Alex Loera. San Francisco continuing to press very high. Kerwood Wagner. Out of her customary right back position. Pushes to the end line. Now Turnbow on the break. 
Something here maybe for Santa Clara. It's the very talented Julie Doyle. Back into the feet of Kelsey Turnbow. Turnbow onto her right foot. Through ball intended for Izzy D'Aquila. Here's Doyle on the left. Julie Doyle into the area and away by Roth. And Doyle, you can see how dynamic she is going through two or three defenders with ease. And she already has two assists so far this year, Julie Doyle. And Again. this is a transition where USF really needs to do well. They cannot lose the ball in the middle third, allowing for Santa Clara to counterattack them. Humphrey, her ball, handled by the goalkeeper, Marley Nicholas, redshirt freshman, who's getting her although, chance. Although US, I'm sorry, Charles, with a delay, sorry for talking over you. In the buildup there for USF, that was a really good buildup. I'd rather see them go forward and lose the ball than have these square balls in the midfield because, again, Santa Clara is so dynamic in their counterattack. So eventually, USF's going to get out in the end of those through balls knowing what the midfielders are looking for, those diagonal runs. Here's Vasquez, and on the turn, it's Ward. Esparza. Still Ward looking to pick out a pass. Nicely worked. Lunsford gets a touch in there. Ward's ball. Looking for Vasquez. Now Turnbow. Here is Jones. That'll be a throw in for San Francisco in front of the Santa Clara bench. Yeah, good transition defense by the Dons, not allowing Santa Clara to penetrate the middle of the field, which they can be so dangerous in. Swerved on in by Humphrey and handled by Marley Nicholas, who is a redshirt freshman goalkeeper who's getting the chance this year, and Jerry Smith really excited to give her the chance. Actually, Santa Clara played with three separate goalkeepers last weekend, all freshmen getting the opportunity to ply their trade. Here comes Santa Clara, the top of the 18 that USF is able to clear. Good tackle there by Santa Clara. Looked like USF was starting their attack. Crossed on in. It goes over the head of Daquila. Oh, and it's an own goal. Oh, how unlucky. It comes off the foot of Kerwood Wagner. And she was looking to clear the ball. But the cross comes in. And Kerwood Wagner sticks the foot out there. And it ends up in the back of the net. San Francisco nil, Santa Clara won. Those things happen when you're constantly attacking and putting the ball across the face of the goal. Unfortunate, but the Dons must bounce back. Well, this is a Santa Clara team that's used to scoring really early as well. They scored their opening two goals last weekend within 12 minutes. I had the chance to do that game against Pacific. And Kylie Halverson was on a hat trick within 12 minutes. And they also scored in the first five minutes of their game against BYU, Joe. And here they do it in the first 13 minutes of this first half as well. 
really setting the tone. Yeah, quick starts really do mean something. This is Loera. Her ball, lovely weighted for Turnbow. Onto her right foot, Kelsey Turnbow, saved by EB, and it goes off the palms of her hands, and Santa Clara gets a second. Kelsey Turnbow with her seventh goal of the season. San Francisco nil, Santa Clara two. And unfortunately for the Dons, that did hit the uh, goalkeeper's hands. Not sure from my angle if she was trying to parry that over the crossbar or if she was trying to catch it. But uh, bottom line is with the back of the net, USF really has to regroup here, get their defense in line. Yeah, Santa they... Clara getting way too many shots on goal too easily. Yeah, they went up into a huddle just now at the top of the 18. And Cassidy George was clapping and trying to get the energy levels up for San Francisco. But two early goals for Santa Clara. Certainly not what Jim Millinder and his side probably thought of getting past the opening 10 minutes. An own goal and then a goal that comes off the palm of the goalkeeper and goes in. And that's good for Kelsey Turnbow's seventh of the year. She was already drafted by the Chicago Red Stars. And actually, last game was the first time she actually didn't score. Long range shot. Oh, and it just stings the palms of the goalkeeper, Nicholas. But Esparza had a good go there. And that was a good shot. And I like to see that taking chances. You never know what's going to happen. Here is Emma Reeves, a sophomore from Carmel Valley. And now Julie Doyle. Is there more for Santa Clara in this opening 15 minutes? And they are up for it. They want to make up from that loss in midweek. As San Francisco looks to do the same, and Sam, excuse me, Santa Clara wins a corner as Doyle goes down right at the end line as the turf meets the concrete. And the referee goes over and she looks to be all right there, Julie Doyle. Just one change for both teams today from the two sides that lost in midweek. Again, San Francisco, they're looking to avenge a loss against St. Mary's 2-0 on Tuesday. Santa Clara looking to avenge a 2-1 loss against BYU in midweek. Ball comes in, it's Loera, it's saved. And Santa Clara still has possession. Alex Loera was able to get her toe to it. Enough to bother the goalkeeper just a bit. But EB was off her line and did a nice job. Otherwise, that was 3-0. Doyle. And the Dons knew they were up for a big challenge today, but they've really got to fight and find within what they're going to do here to sort this out. Really, I think they need to tighten up the back line and the midfield, getting way too many balls through the midfield and then allows them to give those through balls to these dynamic forwards, and they're getting shots on goal quite easily. Reeves, and now one of the many captains, Sophia Jones, the senior. This is Sally Menti, and she lays the ball off there for Doyle who is making an overlapping run. Headed on by Ward into the feet of Lunsford. Looking for Ashley Humphrey. Loera. Alex Loera drafted and she will play in the newly minted Kansas City women's soccer side after her year and she takes a shot from distance. You'll see her kind of pop into those spaces, the holding midfield player, Alex Loera. Very talented, though. She does a lot 
of the work that goes unnoticed, if you will. Absolutely, and she spreads the ball around nicely, keeping the defense on their toes. Headed on by Pagoni. Second ball won there by Santa Clara, but comes back to Pagoni, and then brought down by Menti. Menti, just a freshman, but she plays like she's a senior, because the type of through balls that she plays, she can really unlock teams. And last weekend's match, outside of the foot assist, was really nice to her teammate Halverson for the second goal. Here is Menti. And now Bubness, the freshman. Slotted in to that back line this year. Vasquez. Ward. And is trying to find yeah. Humphrey. Yeah, not a bad idea by the Dons. Humphrey has to anticipate that, make it maybe a little earlier start on her diagonal run. Yeah, but the idea and the intention is there from Ward as well. Here comes Santa Clara. Is there more? Ball hangs up in the air. The wind. But Charles, you can see mm -hmm. how fast Santa Clara transitions from winning the ball from USF to getting right into the attack and putting the Dons under tremendous pressure. Headed on by Ward, and then brought down by Vasquez. Vasquez has been such a wonderful bright spot for Jim Millender this year, the freshman, the winger here on this near side closest to our broadcast position. She can get in tight spaces and loves a 1v1 matchup. Alex Loera now, all the way into midfield from the back line. Stolen here by Cassidy George, who really wants to get on with it. She stops and turns. She's taking her time as well. Vasquez. Ward, that's a lovely ball at Samantha Kerwood-Wagner. Can she square it up? She has a go, and it's over the bar. Charles, you hit the nail on that head. That was a fantastic through ball. And in those situations, you gotta hit the ball, in my opinion, hard and low, because if it doesn't go in, a deflection can happen, and then your oncoming attackers could perhaps finish it off. Really, you need to hit the target when you're that close. Yeah, well, I just spoke about how Jamison Ward will look for that through ball, similar to kind of how Sally Menti does it for Santa Clara. And she's always looking for that unlocking pass and she does it from deep she does it from distance as well here comes menti closing her down is pagoni it's sally menti and a little much on that one again you see the dynamic dynamic offense from santa clara winning the ball in midfield immediately getting into the box and taking a shot with a very strong angle Two nil to Santa Clara, an own goal. And a goal from Kelsey Turnbow. Here's Menti. Over to her left, it's easy Daquila. Still Daquila, shot closed down by Cat Hill. She does well, and the second shot, the follow up by Gore into the side netting. And Santa Clara able to steal the ball off the San Francisco midfield and come right into the 18. Yeah. 
Santa Clara ninth in the national rankings. And I don't see too many weak, weak spots at all for Santa Clara. I can see why they're ranked so high. They really moved the ball nicely, and I, like I've said many times, they just transition really quickly, which is always a sign of a strong team. Yeah, they don't give any teams time on the ball, really. As you can see, the ball just picked up by Menti off of Pagoni right in central midfield. This is Loera. Reeves. She had Karen Gore to her left. Kerwood Wagner looks to break. Loses possession and Menti for Santa Clara. Turnbow on her right, now to her left, back to her right, back to her left. It's still Kelsey Turnbow takes a deflection to Quilla off the bar and in. San Francisco nil, Santa Clara three. Izzy Dequila with the goal. And that's her fifth goal of the season. Scrappy. And she gets it. Her side three nil up already. And there's 20 minutes to go in this first half. And Charles, two of the three goals have come from Santa Clara penetrating deep into the box and putting the ball across the face of the goal. Well, Santa Clara, it is fair to say, they are pretty much in cruise control so far in this first half. Well, I would say they're... They're still going, their pedal is still to the metal. You can see them again, moving the ball constantly. It's never hesitant. They're always looking for the next pass and again, going forward, not side to side necessarily. Loera for Turnbow. Turnbow wins the ball, keeps it, chips it into the area for Doyle, but Molly Eby reads that well. Plenty of fans lining Parker Avenue on the far side of our broadcast position here, looking through the fence, trying to get a little opening as well. There's a couple little openings. And as well where you are, here comes Kaya Pagoni. Marie Marlowe has come into the game for San Francisco. Esparza. Daquila for Doyle. Lots of space for Julie Doyle against Wagner. Wagner gets her toe in there. Vasquez on the sideline here. Reeves wins the battle. Doyle has control. Loera's ball to Easy Dequila, who scored a couple of minutes ago with her fifth of the season. Santa Clara really creating a lot of space for themselves, which results in these direct shots on goal. Lucky that wasn't on target because that had quite a bit of power behind it. Kylie Halverson comes into the game for Julie Doyle. Kylie Halverson scored a brace last week against Pacific, the opening two goals within 12 minutes in that game. Here's Vasquez. Can she get something going for San Francisco? Right now, everything kind of going the other way 
and certainly going Santa Clara's way. All the chances, second balls, opportunities. San Francisco seventh in the WCC. One, three, and one in the conference. Two, three, and two overall. Santa Clara, five and zero oh overall. If they win today, they'll go to six and zero. Oh. They've already beaten the teams just below them, Pepperdine and BYU. And the number nine team in the country here, three nil to the good against San Francisco. Substitutions coming for Santa Clara and for San Francisco, Bianca Code, Sydney Cooper, as well as Anna Gorlock. And for Santa Clara, it's Eden White. And I believe Skylar Smith. So Eden White, Smith, Code, Cooper, and Gorlock. Two changes for... Yeah, go ahead, Joe. And, and with Code and Cooper coming into the game, if I'm a USF, I'm going to try to stretch the defense of the Broncos, really to keep, take the pressure off of my midfield and defense. Cooper can certainly get up and down the line here, look for Code to be more of a target player, but if I'm a USF, I'm going to start to stretch the game just a little bit. Well, Jim Millinder has waited... 17 minutes to go here to put those two substitutions on. But one thing that we've seen both of those two players have, and they, they always bring it. They have grit, and they have heart, and they have passion. They may not start every game, both Cooper and Code, but they, they give it their all, and they do make an impact off of the bench. And perhaps some coaches like to have players like that to do things like that, Joe. Well, the role of a substitution is always to lift the existing players on the field up. You need to bring life and new energy and new blood into the game. So Cooper certainly does that, and Bianca Code always does that with her hustle and grit. And Bianca Code is a local player who came through the San Francisco Elite Academy from San Francisco uh, as well, an organization that you're involved with. Absolutely, and she was a product of Sacred Heart High School, so always great to see local kids make it. Here's Kerwood Wagner. Now Eden White. This is Skylar Smith. Controlled by Sophia Jones. Jones and Loera controlling things in that back line today. Nice to have senior captains and leaders, one of which has already been drafted in, into the NWSL. Here comes Cooper. Ward thought it came off of the foot of Smith. Handled well here. Back into the feet of Smith. And now Code. Can she get there? It's Bianca Code. She rounds the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper comes out. The referee blows his whistle. Now he's got a decision to make here. He Code is on the does. ground. And it's a yellow card issued here. It's a, so who did he call the foul on? Well, we'll have to hear from the stadium operations crew who he called the foul on it. It may have been the goalkeeper. It also may have been Loera. And we don't wish for red cards, but the rule is the la if it's the last defender who makes the foul, it's an automatic red. So, so I'm not sure how he's defining this, but it's a free kick for the Dons just out. What is this, about uh, 20, 23, 24 yards out? Yeah, a little bit more than that. I would probably say 30. And the yellow card goes to Loera. And I believe they were even when, they, when that ball had, had started, Joe, and maybe Loera actually did have a, a bit of a step, but Bianca Code made up so much ground, at least from my position. But, it, um, a, but I'm pitch well, side uh, here. Yeah. I'm pitch side here yeah. with not a big angle, so so th there you go. But uh, we're, we're, we're not here to, you know, 
right. chat we're, we're too much about we're, refereeing we're decisions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. Uh, interesting and, and extremely close. And here comes a, a conference. Uh, uh, well, actually, now now the assistant and the referee are going to chat here because the goalkeeper did come out, and, and I, I hear your point. So I have to see. He wants to make sure that he gets this correct, Lee. Right, and then that's that's all that uh, you know the game wants is to be following the rules and uh, that was just a very very close call so let's they're, see what happens they're here. talking for they some time soccer, here they usually avoid the red cards don't they now blows his whistle it's going to be on a gore lock oh what a free kick that is and nicholas able to handle didn't bother her too much but she did have to make the save to get to her there well you always like to see the referee confer with the assistant as well we weren't really sure what had happened in that last play either but San Francisco's Bianca Code had a step. She was brought down. Yellow card to Loera. And with 15 minutes left, it is a Santa Clara lead. And at some point, San Francisco needs to continue to have chances like they just had if they are to try to get a result in this game today. And it's going to be a San Francisco throw here. Kerwood Wagner throws the ball in. Brought down by Gorlock, who's already made a big difference. Same thing with Code. Here she is on the ball. Bianca Code weaving her way through. She went to ground, but she wasn't protesting for a free kick. And now this is White for Turnbow. Very much the talus woman of this Santa Clara team. She is going to be a really wonderful professional player. He just scores goals in bunches, technical with the ball at her feet. A joy to watch, joy to commentate as well, I must add. Esparza. Looking for Gorlock. Battle won here by Santa Clara, and then Pagoni was upended. It will be a free kick for San Francisco as they look to restart. The USF's really struggling to connect passes, particularly as they transition from the middle third into their attack just unable to put two or three passes together and put Santa Clara under any sort of pressure. Here is Turnbow. Turnbow, she puts the ball on the ground looking for Daquila who had timed the run separately from what Turnbow had intended. Turnbow is quite the dynamic player, really getting down the wing at will and then trying to get the ball to her teammates in front of the goal. Here's Gorlock. All the way back to the goalkeeper, Nicholas. Headed on here. And now this is Ward for Esparza. 10 minutes, 40 seconds to go in this half. Another substitution coming for San Francisco. It's going to be Beth Ann Perry, who started many games a year and a half ago during the 2019 season in central midfield. And she'll get her chance now, this final little bit for San Francisco. Marie Marlowe on the left. 
Still Marlowe. Fine run by Marlowe. Cooper, it's off here. Could it fall for Code? And Code tracking the ball down against Loera, who looks to play out with her feet. Yeah, Marlowe doing a great job getting into the box and putting the ball in front of goal. USF just needs a few more of those to start putting, again, Santa Clara defense under some pressure. This is White back to Loera, who looks to clear. Kept in by Kerwood Wagner. And Santa Clara will look to restart. This is the 37th meeting between these two teams. Santa Clara has won 34 of the meetings. San Francisco has won one time, and there's been one tie. That was back in 2012 in Jim Millinder's first season. The other lone win for San Francisco was in Jim Millinder's fourth season, the 2015 year, which San Francisco got closest to winning the NCAA, excuse me, to try to get into the NCAA tournament. They were runners up in the West Coast Conference, but they missed out on the NCAA tournament that year. They lost their final and match in at the Portland. Last game, that's right. Sorry, Charles. That was crushing for the team. I remember that well. Yeah. Yeah, very special group that Jim Millinder had brought in in his first year, and they were all seniors then, and they knocked off the likes of BYU in San Diego. They got the result against Santa Clara. And for those of you that are tuning in, maybe from the Santa Clara side, San Francisco has never made the NCAA tournament, and that's why Jim Millinder is in San Francisco. Many years at USC, eight out of his ten seasons at USC, got his team to, to the tournament. They've gotten close here a couple of times, but still the idea and the intention is to do that and to continue to build this into a program of which he can now recruit and has done a fine job of bringing in really talented players. And now it's just about the results and kind of a which year is it going to be. Here is Bianca Code. And now Marlowe. Still Marlowe. Does really well, gets to the top of the 18. It's off for Beth and Perry. Nice little ball, and Cooper is offside. And as I just talked about, Jim Millinder, Joe, here to try to stabilize the program, which he certainly has done, and then brought in really quality players. And it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of results and a matter of, hey, which year is it going to be, which then will probably catapult them as a program for years to come, hopefully in the conference. Absolutely, and there's no one better than Jim Billinger to build a program and build the program based on the core values of the university. He's bringing in great student athletes who are doing great things on and off the pitch during their undergraduate studies and after. So look for this program. You know, again, this, this is a very difficult year, isn't it? But uh, I would say they can't wait to get back on the uh, field in the fall. Not that this season's over, but uh, it's going to be an exciting fall with his these returning players as well as newcomers. And then look for the fans and the stands to be packed. I think the fans are waiting and dying and chomping at the bit to get back in the stadium. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, Santa Clara, with their last buildup, really nicely done. As Turnbow had played in Julie Doyle. Excuse me, Marika Gway, I do apologize. And Marika Gway went to ground. No penalty, said the referee. As Molly Eby got a hand to it. She was down here for a second. And she's hobbling around. She says she's okay. Six minutes and 40 seconds to go. I'm not sure if they have to change the goalkeeper or not, Joe. But as you were talking, a really fine opportunity for Santa Clara. And maybe a shout, maybe a shout there for a penalty. But it was not given. And I'm sorry if I was uh, talking too much, Charles. I don't have the greatest angle here, so I didn't see the buildup coming that close to the goal. Well, it'll be a restart for Santa Clara. Be taken by White. She'll just play the ball into Kerwood Wagner, who will marshal that in for a throw. Cooper. She's got herself a throw as well. Well, since San Francisco conceded their third, they've somewhat stabilized things a little bit, but 
Santa Clara continues to attack. They continue to create chances. And as you said, Joe, they're not stopping at all. Really look the part of a uh, first place team in the conference as well. Yes, and, and this, is, this is the dilemma for USF. USF has stabilized things in the last 10 minutes. But going forward, they don't have the numbers to go forward because they are holding back a little bit, in my opinion. So it's tough because you see Cooper here on the right. You'd like to see her up higher in the field, closer to goal to create those goal scoring opportunities. Out where she is now, she doesn't really have those opportunities. But again, really trying to stabilize the back line and the midfield to stop that lethal Santa Clara transition. And it's out for a throw for San Francisco deep in the Santa Clara half here with just around five minutes and 20 seconds to go. It's a nice little ball by Gorlock, waited for Cooper, and she is offside there. And I think you're right about Sydney Cooper. would love to see her kind of in a front too, Joe, wouldn't you? Absolutely, because she does bring energy. She does bring speed, and she has a knack of getting behind the defenders. Anytime you can get behind the defenders with the ball, you're in a dangerous position. Now under five minutes to go in this half. Gway. Halverson. Halverson operating on the right. That's the run of Esparza. Crosses the ball in. San Francisco she will... She did everything it. right except for that last pass right yeah and she is a really influential player in this Santa Clara team coming off of the bench she started in midweek against BYU obviously from her really good performance against Pacific from the week before Kylie Halverson a junior from Hawaii Kai well when you have wingers like this who stay wide get the ball at their feet and then are able to get behind the defense down to the byline, it creates so much space for those oncoming attackers in the middle of the field. It's a great weapon to have, or great weapons to have. This is Cat Hill. Speaking of stabilizing things, nice to have her back. She missed all of the 2019 year, out with a knee injury, and she actually had to kind of hobble off against St. Mary's in the last little bit, but she is a natural leader back there. And in her freshman year, she was the captain of this team and continues to do so today. And maybe in a positive way, COVID was a good thing for Cat Hill, giving her just a little bit extra time to come back from that very serious knee injury. Here's Turnbow, who has already scored her seventh goal of the season today. Santa Clara playing in their seventh game. The only game she didn't score in was in midweek against BYU. So good for a goal a game, her record. And also, she had an assist to Dequila on Wednesday, which puts her in the 25, 25 club. Only eight players have done that for Santa Clara. The last player. Well, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it really is. Especially from a, such a strong program. So congratulations to her. Here is Code. That's really awkward for the goalkeeper. Nicholas had to be there and was. Just in and case. Charles, to be honest, I thought she had the goalkeeper off her line. I thought that intended cross might have gone in for a goal just over the crossbar. Yeah, I actually had thought so too from my from my position. And, and for the Dons would have taken it without blinking. And for those of you tuning in here, the weather isn't too much of a factor. Sometimes it's a little chilly and extreme windy stuff that that happens on this pitch and this pitch is like a putting green if you're watching from home so it just charles this is like a summer's day in, in San Francisco. <laughs> what are you talking about yeah <laughs> well you you never know if that that was hanging up in the wind there um with that shot 
So here's Gorlock with a minute and 10 seconds to go. Last little attack for San Francisco. Maybe a chance to get something before the end of the half. I'm sure they'd love to get something. Comes off of the foot of Bethann Perry all the way back to the goalkeeper, Nicholas. But, but Charles, as a player or as a coach, you don't ever want your team to hang their heads. And USF, even though they gave up three goals fairly early in this game, they are still attacking. They're showing their character. They're they're building the game and they're trying to go forward. And yes, they are knocking on the goal for that on the door for that first goal. Just around 30 seconds to go or so in this first half. It is Turnbow, maybe one last shot. Skyler Smith, Turnbow, 20 seconds left. On the turn, it's Smith. Her shot is high and wide, and that will most likely do it for this first half on the WCC Network. So at the break, Santa Clara comes out and scores a few goals in this opening 15 minutes. The first goal coming from a cross that Kerwood Wagner directed into her own net for an own goal. The second one was Kelsey Turnbow and her brilliant moves at the top of the area. It stung the palms of the goalkeeper, Molly Eby, but it did go in for her seventh of the season. Izzy Dequilla followed up, and that's what Santa Clara is in right now in the driver's seat, very much in cruise control into gear number five, six, and who knows, maybe gear seven NCAA tournament <laughs> time to maybe think about for Jerry Smith and his team, or maybe before that, of course, they have to secure the West Coast Conference title first. So at the break, it is San Francisco nil, Santa Clara three. You don't want to go anywhere. Keep your computer, your tablet, the stadium app, locked here to this game. We'll be back with the second half. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're very grateful to you, and we know that we would love to have you back in stadiums because both Joe and I can call this game, but it is nothing, it is nothing like having fans and supporters in the stadiums. A huge piece of the world's game, a huge piece of soccer, football, football, whatever you call it. We're all in this together. So wear your masks, get vaccinated when you can, keep this broadcast on. Thank you so much for growing the game. We'll be back with the second half in a little bit. If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open. Doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it. And you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about. Like our super reward checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation. And there are no ATM or monthly service fees. Zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union.
If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus, in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open. Doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it. And you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about, like our super reward checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation, and there are no ATM or monthly service fees, zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to providencecu.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union. Welcome back to the second half here at Negoesco Stadium. Charles Wolin alongside my broadcast partner Joe Dugan here on the WCC Network for our broadcast of San Francisco and Santa Clara. Santa Clara leads 3-0 at the half against a San Francisco side that has only beaten Santa Clara one time ever and has tied them one time but Santa Clara has defeated San Francisco 34 times. This is the 37th meeting between these two sides and San Francisco would love to see if they could get some sort of result from this but it's very much uphill in this second half. Santa Clara's two goals in the first 12 minutes of this game. An own goal and then a goal by their leading scorer, Kelsey Turnbow. It's going to be a long throw in for San Francisco. It's going to be taken by Kaya Pagoni. On here for Lunsford. Does really well. Pagoni, second ball. Cassidy George is in there looking for the follow-up shot. George on the turn and cleared away by Eden White for Santa Clara. San Francisco has started brightly in this second half. And I'm going to welcome in my broadcast partner, Joe Dugan, there. A little audio difficulties. Joe is socially distant from me, and I hope that you can hear him. Joe, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. I'm back. <laughs> and I was just uh, saying that I'm sure Jim Millinder at halftime encouraged his team to get that first goal. You don't go out and say, we need three goals. Just get the first one and go from there. Here is Julie Doyle now for Santa Clara into the pathway of Kylie Halverson, stolen away by Cat Hill. Good stuff by Marie Marlowe. Marlowe, and now Ward, who's looking for that through ball. We saw her, Joe, trying to play a lot of through balls. And here she is, nice wall pass. It's Vasquez, Marissa Vasquez! Save made by Nicholas. And this is a really good start for the Dons. This is exactly what Jim Millinder, I'm sure, encouraged his team to do. Come out on the front foot in the second half and show these Santa Clara Broncos that you're not going away.
Santa Clara controlling things now for the first time in this second half as USF had started very brightly, Joe. Yes, sir. Nice work this on the far side by Karen Gore. And then crossed in. Restart coming for San Francisco. Well, just some t statistics, if you will, here in the first half. San Santa Clara, 13 shots to San Francisco's five. Just one corner, and that was for Santa Clara in that first half. The one yellow card to Alex Loera on the half-hour mark. Now, Halverson goes down, and it's actually going the other way. Referee stops the clock and now changes the direction of the free kick and said, my bad, pointing to himself in that instance. So, free kick for Santa Clara in a dangerous territory now. Yeah, this is much closer than the free kick from a similar distance or area as USF had ending the first half. So, Charles, at my vantage point, what is this, about uh, 20 yards out? Yeah, it's right at the top of the 18. It's going to be Julie Doyle. It's going to be Menti. Oh, what a goal. Sally Menti, take a bow. San Francisco nil, Santa Clara four. The freshman. I'd like to see the replay on that. Not sure if the wall was correctly set up. It looked like the ball just went over or around the wall a little bit too easy and into that area where the wall should have been protecting. Well, Sally Menti with a phenomenal finish directly from the free kick. And Menti, just a freshman from Seattle, Washington. Yeah, Charles, on that replay, it looks like it might have gone through the wall. Players jumping up, trying to prevent it from going over them, and I think it went through the wall. Well, last week, Santa Clara scored four goals against Pacific. They have four goals against San Francisco. They're very much looking to avenge that 2-1 loss against BYU, which was a non-conference loss against a conference opponent as Pagoni just muscled Doyle out of the way. Cat Hill, now Vasquez. Well, this would be the third time that Santa Clara has scored four goals.
making the run there is George, who's offside. Well, better stuff from San Francisco. They're winning free kicks in and around the Santa Clara area. Not, nothing really to show for their hard work as far. And again, it comes down to the finishing, Joe, that Jim Millinder chatted about with me before the game. It, it really does. And this is the separation between elite teams and other teams, is that these elite teams can really finish and other teams get really close, but don't always see the reward of their hard work. There's Sophia Jones. This is White. Her ball over the head of Daquila. And Karen Gore can't quite bring it down. And that was on on the diagonal by White. And that was a fantastic ball. Lucky for USF that the first touch, touch was a little heavy. Unable to get a shot on goal. Vasquez. Vasquez's ball will bother Marley Nicholas. Esparza. Stolen almost by Doyle, but Esparza to the end line. Esparza. Switch of the field here by Marlowe. Marlowe, not too happy with that cross. She looks up into the air, right in front of our broadcast position here. She is one of the upperclassmen on this team and does score and unlock other teams quite often. So at this point for San Francisco, just trying to get a goal, see if they can get a foothold. And difficult to play 4-0 down at home. And it's these little steps for this young San Francisco team, we might add. It's Cat Hill, her shot, and she drags it wide. Why not? And you always like to see Cat Hill the, showing, the competitor that, the, her, showing the competitor that she is, moving up the field all the way from her center back position. She does not want to get shut out today. This is Ellie Glenn. Daquila, who scored her fifth goal of the season, the third one of this game. Vasquez. Kerwood Wagner, who's done really well now. San Francisco keeping Santa Clara in their half for now. Menti will calm things down. Jones. Doyle upended. And she'll restart. And in a bit of some pain there, unfortunately, is Julie Doyle, as you see on her screen, on, on your screen there. And the trainer comes out to her. Yeah, let's hope she's okay. Seemed to be a simple kick in, from the behind. It didn't seem like it was a, a big blow, but you, you never know how, how bad it really was. I don't think there was any intent there, but let's hope she's okay. Yeah, she is tended to at midfield. As you can see, the San Francisco Dons on your screen huddling up there. And she looks to be in a bit of pain. So we do wish her well, of course. And 
She's had a good game thus far as well. Comes up with the assist of that third goal. She's back up on her feet, though. And she seems to be okay. And that's a good sign. She's walking off on her own. Expect her, uh, I would hope, and expect her to come back in after a short required break on the sideline there. Or perhaps they're subbing. Not really sure what's going on. Yeah, coming into the game now for Santa Clara is uh, Skylar Smith. So Smith in the match now for Doyle, who is on her feet. And is at the sideline. Will be tended to by the medical staff. Sophia Jones. We've played an hour. We've got a half hour to go on the WCC network. It is San Francisco nil, Santa Clara four. Jones. Ball over the top. Halverson is there, so is Cat Hill. The freshman Bubness playing that ball. A counterattack, here comes Lunsford. And Charles, although that didn't work out for the Dons, that was a very good attack, and that's exactly what we spoke about in the first half with Cooper, playing her higher, put her in a position to succeed, put her, put her in a position to put the uh, Santa Clara Broncos under pressure, which she certainly did on that play. Kerwood Wagner will look to switch the play for San Francisco. On the right as Santa Clara presses. There's not a ton of urgency because they're 4-0 up as well. But here comes Izzy DeQuilla for Santa Clara. Izzy DeQuilla into the pathway. It's Halverson. And it's just wide. Well, DeQuilla to Halverson. Is she... And a fine opportunity, perhaps maybe curse of the commentator as Dequila nicks the ball off of a San Francisco player in the back line. And that was a fine buildup by Santa Clara, but give USF Dons credit for pressuring the attacker there, forcing the, the shot wide. This is Ward. Can she find one of her trademark through balls? Ward will have a go herself and Marley Nicholas is doing just fine right there in her position. Not enough to really bother or bug her too much. That's right. Just a little bit too far out to be threatening. Jones. Again, lots of space and time for her in this back line. The last number of minutes, the back line for Santa Clara has had some time on the ball. San Francisco not pressing as much. Absorbing a little bit of pressure now and trying to win balls back in midfield and in their back line. Here's Cat Hill. Closed down by Halverson. Santa Clara will make two changes. It'll be Marika Guay and it'll be a goalkeeping change, Kylie Fouch, who did feature last week as Santa Clara was up 4-0 against Pacific. They actually rotated goalkeepers two times in that game, so we saw three different goalkeepers from Santa Clara as well. So Kylie Fouch will have a go. And Marika way back in the game for Santa Clara. And she's from Chateau Gouet, Quebec, Canada, the junior. Glenn. Dequila. Gouet. One back by Dequila. Esparza looking for Lunsford. Can she win the second ball? 
Very routine for Santa Clara. Smith. Gore. And now Glenn. Gorlock wins back possession and then gifts it right back to Marika Gway, who's come on as a substitute. Wide ball here for Eden White, brought down by Smith. Smith's ball to the back stick, chested down by Samantha Kerwood Wagner, and the shot low on the ground, followed up by Smith, goes wide. And that was not too far off, Charles. Yeah, well, anytime you exchange 20 passes from the right to the left, then back to the right for the shot, it, it looks good. I can good. see what USF <laughs> is doing. They have a central block of defense, which is actually working. They're not allowing Santa Clara to penetrate through the middle, but they are giving up the wings, trying to adjust once the ball goes wide, and that is causing these balls to go across from side to side. Yeah, and for Santa Clara's game last week against Pacific, they probably had about 20, 25 passes before their right wing back scored the fourth goal of the day for them. So it's not uncommon for them to exchange multiple, multiple passes to, to build up to a goal like they did last week for Karen Gore's goal. Closest to our broadcast position here, you can see here at the bottom of the screen, number eight. But it kind of reminded me of that in that instance. So... Long build-ups, keeping the ball, keeping possession, up 4-0. Here, Santa Clara, just keep the ball. San Francisco, get on the ball. Create some restarts. Ball's over the top. Trying to change the momentum. Gore. To the feet of Marlowe, and now Gorlock. Ward, slip on the ground there by Vasquez. It'll be a Santa Clara throw on the far side in front of the San Francisco bench. And look at Cat Hill taking that quick restart. Very smart play. Let's see if USF can get anything in their offensive third out of this. Lunsford, and she's got a corner. Well, that's the first corner of the game for San Francisco. And you can see USF pushing nine, ten players into the box. It's really important for the Dons to get on the scoreboard to change, if ever so slightly, the momentum of this game. Driven on in, punched away by Fouch. Marie Marlowe misses on the follow-up. Here comes Santa Clara through the feet of Gore. White on the left side. Ellie Glenn. Humphreyson. Flag stays down. Onside. Esparza wins the battle. And the ball bouncing and bobbling around. And Molly E.B. does clear. Ball kept in play. Glenn. And now Gway. Gore. Her cross over the head of D'Aquila. Chasing it down is Halverson. Lunsford. It's been a bright spot for San Francisco today. She helped this team start brightly in the first half and bright in the second. Marie Marlowe making a good run. 
Marlowe, end line, still Marlowe. Vasquez get there. Fouch is there. And that was a very good run by Marlowe, getting on the end of that longer ball by USF. If they can just get her some support once she gets on the end of those diagonal runs, they're going to be much more lethal. And Halverson upended their free kick coming for Santa Clara. Just around 21 minutes to go. It was taken quickly. Referee says play on. Here is Skylar Smith. She's in the corner. She crosses the ball in and doesn't get her foot all the way around that. Four changes coming for San Francisco. Sydney Cooper, Beth Ann Perry, Ashley Humphrey, and Bianca Code in the game. Withdrawn, Kaya Pigoni, Marie Marlowe, and rather, sorry, Kaya Pigoni does stay in the game. It'll be Jamison Ward, Marlowe, and a couple others. We'll get to that in just a second as San Francisco restarts. This is Menti, who scored the last goal for Santa Clara. And a absolute peach of a goal from the set piece. Karen Gore. Offside flag raised. Or rather, I guess she barged into Esparza there. Twenty minutes to go on the WCC network. San Francisco nil, Santa Clara four. Gore. Menti for Guay. Guay's ball. Quickly thrown in, handled by the Santa Clara midfield into the feet of Jones. This is Gore. Smith has a step on Esparza, and her teammate Kenna Roth helps her out back there in the back line. A little bit of space. Can San Francisco get out of this? Can Code chase down Jones? They had a good little foot race at the end of that first half there, Joe. Absolutely. Santa Clara continues to move the ball side to side, up and back, really not allowing San Francisco to even contest because they are releasing the ball so quickly. Restart coming now for the home side. And a pair of changes coming for both sides as well in just a moment. Cassidy George will be back in the game for the San Francisco Dons, as well as Rachel Bastone will make way here and get an opportunity for Coach Jerry Smith's side. Cat Hill put in a position there, really tough position by her teammate. Next time she says, you know, next time send it down the, the wing rather than putting the ball back when she, the last defender, is under pressure by Santa Clara Bronco. Free kick coming now for Santa Clara, going to be taken by Karen Gore. Two in the wall for San Francisco. It's Karen Gore over the bar. In an angle like that, it's a really precarious position because it could be either be a shot or a cross. You just don't know. So Pagoni takes a break. Cassidy George takes her place. Rachel Bastone in the game, the freshman as well as Makoto Nezu 
in the game now for Santa Clara. Jerry Smith in his 35th year at Santa Clara. He's made the tournament 29 times. Not a bad record. And to say the least. And uh, in the in the pole position for the WCC title again this year. It will be their first title since 2013 with after this game. They've just got two games left, Santa Clara. So Charles, question for you. Considering that the players get an extra year of eligibility, does this count as a conference? Does this count for a conference championship if Santa Clara does win? Well, yeah, it certainly counts as a conference championship because okay. the fall season was moved into the spring and you get the extra year of of eligibility. So a lot of these Santa Clara players actually and in, in chatting with their um, PR uh, folks and sports information director uh, Joey Carp last week before had the chance to do this game. Uh, Alex Loera and Kelsey Turnbow will stay uh, for the fall season before they have to report to their NWSL clubs in spring of 2022. So wow. I don't know if that was the answer to your question. Clara. Yeah, I don't know yes, if that was no, the that answer, answer to your question, question, but Thank you. yeah, of course. And and I would assume that some seniors may elect to, to stay and some of them want to continue to go, um, even if you are selected or you're not selected, right? Uh, so, you know, some seniors uh, and their coaches probably have to work that kind of thing out, right? Absolutely. But isn't it wonderful that these young ladies have an opportunity to now go professionally in our own country? I couldn't agree more, and it's uh, long overdue. Long overdue. Absolutely. Uh, and we need more NWSL clubs. We need more women's soccer clubs. Uh, we need more of a commitment to the women's game um, because um, that should happen. Um, Absolutely. And, and that's why I can't wait for the fans to get back into the stands and see these young ladies uh, striving on the field are really examples for these younger kids wishing to be like them one day. Yeah, you have to go back to the days of the uh, the Cyber Rays uh, in San Jose to talk about professional women's soccer in the Bay Area. Uh, there's a couple maybe rumors here or there, uh, you know, not sure what's going to happen with the Sacramento group, uh, potentially with their NWSL um, ambitions there. Uh, same thing uh, with down at Earthquake Stadium, Earthquake's Way. What's going to happen? You know, I think the the climate is is there and ready for a, a women's side in San Jose and in the South Bay. But hey, if it's up here in Oakland or in San Francisco, uh, with the emergence of Oakland Roots or, or something uh, uh, here in San Francisco, you know that would be wonderful. Um, and well, I think well, there's room for not just one team, Joe, now that we're on this subject, because clearly we're both passionate about it. Two teams, I think, at least, at the very least, in the Bay well, Area or Northern California. Right. I don't think there's any better city in America for a women's professional soccer team than San Francisco. It's, it stands for a lot of things that the women's game stands for, and I think San, San Francisco would celebrate it and support it. Well, goal kick coming for Santa Clara Next weekend, they host Gonzaga at home on the WCC Network at 1 o'clock. And then they go to San Diego on the 17th of, of this month. And that will be their final game away. Now, Gonzaga having a good season. They're in the top four of this West Coast Conference, but it is a team that San Francisco did beat here on this pitch just a few weeks ago. And then they had to halt the program for COVID protocols. So tricky opponent for Santa Clara. And then they've got to make that trip to San Diego. San Diego, they are ninth out of 10th position in the conference at this time. But Santa Clara has a step on everybody. They are undefeated. And after this game today, looks like they'll remain that way. 6-0 and potentially for them. And may get a chance to potentially, potentially host a couple games in the NCAA tournament, which I know would delight Jerry Smith and his staff as well. And again, only help to grow the game of soccer in the Bay Area. And by that time, potentially, who knows, maybe a stadium could be open for a little bit of capacity, potentially orange tier or something like that. I'm not sure how all the tiers work, but I know that Major League Baseball has fans and 
33%, I believe, yeah. of the stadium capacity. Yeah, and I know Santa Clara County is obviously, and San Francisco County, in, in very good uh, lockstep with the health protocols. So we want to make sure everyone's safe. And again, if there is an opportunity, obviously, for Santa Clara maybe to even host a game, the NCAA tournament, or for that matter, I'm sure they'd love to have a couple fans, if not couple hundred spaced out down at Stevens Stadium. Here's Cat Hill and now Kenna Roth. Final 11 minutes of this game. San Francisco looking for a consolation goal. Santa Clara just seeing the game through on a beautiful Saturday in San Francisco. The 7x7, seven seven, the city by the bay. Thank you so much for joining us today. Charles Wolin and Joe Dugan with you. It's a very awesome thing for you to be tuning into our broadcast. Now here comes Santa Clara on the break. It's Riley Burrell. And now Sianna Elmazai. Excuse me, Elmazai. Stolen by Beth Ann Perry in midfield. Can she maintain possession? Gore. Approaching the 81st minute of this match on the WCC network. Own goal from San Francisco, the first goal of this game. Then Kelsey Turnbow. Does what she does best. Scored her seventh goal of this young season still. And I'm sure she has quite a few goals left for the season. Here comes Beth Ann Perry. She's upended. No call, says the referee. Bubness. Nezu. That third goal was scored right before the end of the half by Izzy Dequila. And then a set piece by Menti. Directly off the free kick for her first collegiate goal. Perry. And now Cooper, leading goal scorer of the San Francisco side. Onto her left, now over to her right. She finds Lunsford, who gets to the end line. Lunsford. Cross into the area. Right idea there, and it was a good cross, too. It was the right idea, like you said, Charles. Roth for Marlowe. And Gore. Marlowe. Humphrey, back to goal. Finds Marlowe. And away by Karen Gore. Marlo, the junior from Fallbrook, California. Here is Humphrey. Still, it's Ashley Humphrey on the turn. Took a bit of a bounce in front of Kylie Fouch, who was right there for her team. And a good flick by Vanessa Mejia, the redshirt sophomore from Hayward. Diana Morales. Nezu. Gore. Nezu on the turn. No problem for her. And the ball all the way at the left side. Smart build up by Santa Clara. It's Eden White, her shot, and just the side netting. Well, for a moment, nice run. <laughs> the Santa Clara bench actually thought that was in. They were celebrating as it hit that side netting. And as yeah, you were saying, very Joe. Nice run by Santa Clara. I believe goalkeeper Edie had that angle covered.
Seven minutes left on the WCC network between the th these two sides. 37th meeting. Good little Bay Area derby that Santa Clara has dominated. And I'm sure, again, USF pushing for that consolation. Like something to show for their work today. Two substitutions coming, Jamison Ward and Marissa Vasquez back in the game for San Francisco. San Francisco. Gorlock. Bit of a change of shape for Jim Millender now. Looks like there was three in the back for a second. Marlowe does well. Still Marie Marlowe finds Jamison Ward, who played a wall pass directly in the center channel for Sidney Cooper. Vasquez, Ward, still Ward. Marika Gway. Burl. And Gabby Rizzo in the game, the freshman from Huntington Beach, made that nice sliding challenge for the Dons. Beth Ann Perry. Off to her right for Vasquez. Her cross, it hangs up in the air. Fouch had to look up, then look back, then look up. The wind potentially a little bit of a factor in that one. And free kick coming to Santa Clara Burl, upended. A sophomore from San Jose, St. Francis High School. Here she is. Still Burl. Comes off the back of Gorlock. Less than four minutes to go. This is Karen Gore. Santa Clara wins the second ball. And just a clearance will do by Bastone. And Charles, I'm here. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yep, we can. Okay, great. Thank you. Just uh, three minutes and 15 seconds to go. And for folks tuning into our broadcast, thanks for dealing with any audio issues that we have or delays. Uh, Joe Dugan and I are socially distant from each other. This is Burl in the corner. Still Burl. Comes off Gorlock. It'll be a corner. Only the second corner for Santa Clara. Yeah, and Santa Clara has a really dynamic team. I think this is one of the best teams from Santa Clara I've seen in many, many years. And they've had strong teams uh, throughout the years. So I... I what I'm saying is this is a top team that could go well deep into the tournament this year, in my opinion. Charles, what do you think? Here's Gway. Get to that in just a second. Swerve back in there, headed on and handled by Molly Eby. Yeah, I agree with you uh, completely. I think the understanding of the upperclassmen and the combination of the... Um, freshmen and sophomores in this team um, with Jerry Smith and the the understanding of the system and what they try to do. Here's Sidney Cooper on the turn and handled by Fouch. I think all the players buy in to the system and I, I had the chance to do their game last week and I've gotten the chance to commentate and 
do the broadcasting for Santa Clara in their first game back um, since COVID. And uh, even in their 2-0 victory against Portland, they were they were dominant. Um, they score early, um, and their their intensity level um, is is unrivaled, really. Um, and uh, they're just really disciplined, and they do things well. Um, and uh, good touches on the ball. Uh, nice, neat, clean, tidy out of the back as well. And again, the understanding of the system, I think, Joe, um, from kind of a 4-3-3 morphing into a 3-5-2 and what they want to do, especially with that front 3-2 with Kelsey Turnbow and Izzy Dequilla um, and, and players like Halverson and Julie Doyle. And you got Sally Menti and, and Alex Loera. I mean, yes, Sophia Jones in the back line. I mean, yes, you're right. I do think that they could go far. Um, obviously, a tournament's a tournament play, right? So you could not be good on the day potentially, but... Um, uh, I haven't seen Santa Clara have too many hiccups so far this, this season. Um, obviously, the loss in midweek to BYU, but, um, you know, I, 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 I agree with you. Um, and it would be nice to see a West Coast Conference team host many games, um, and it looks to potentially be that way for them, but I don't want to speak too soon. So um, Yes, agree. It is the understanding and the execution of a system that they do so well. Final chance of the game. It's going to come to Santa Clara's Vanessa Mejia on this right side. All the way back to Molly Eby. And on a really beautiful day in San Francisco. It is Santa Clara's day in San Francisco here. Wasn't really ever in doubt. A own goal by San Francisco. And followed up quickly by a goal from Kelsey Turnbow. Her seventh of the season. Her seventh goal in her seventh game this year for Santa Clara. She's only not scored in one game, and that was in midweek. Izzy Dequila then got her fifth of the year before the half. And then in the second half, San Francisco started brightly in the opening five 